Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. There's even a brand new Brigadier General tier where you can get a shout out on a Commander's Quarters episode that's dedicated to you. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Quarters studio. Welcome to the show. Before we jump into this episode really quick, if you haven't seen my previous episode, Birds of Prey, make sure you check that one out first because that's the initial deck and this is the break the bank for that deck and this episode really won't make all that much sense if you haven't seen that deck. So. I'll wait for a second. Uh, if you haven't uh, seen the episode, go ahead and go there and watch that. Okay, you're back. Hey, how's it going? Awesome. All right, let's jump into the Break the Bank. Again, on these Break the Banks, I'm going to take my budget deck and up that budget to around $100. So I'm going to talk about what's going into the deck and what's coming out of the deck. And yeah, that's basically the format. And of course, just like the deck tech, this Break the Bank comes to you courtesy of Sam, who's been supporting this channel as a Golden Pig tier patron. I truly couldn't do this without the support for amazing patrons like Sam, so again, Sam, thank you so much. And as a quick reminder, the deck tech and break the bank, of course, are built around a Revy Imperial Tactician. The focus again is on evasive creatures, flyers, Tims, untapped triggers, and a lot of other fun things. Regardless, let's jump into those break the bank upgrades that we're going to be adding into this deck. First up, we're going to be adding in Tetsuko Umazawa Fugitive. She's a 1-3 human rogue that says creatures you control with power or toughness, one or less, can't be blocked. So yeah, not only is she unblockable, but she essentially makes the vast majority of our creatures in this deck unblockable too. So even if you want to attack an opponent with something like, you know, your Tim, Prodigal Sorcerer, you can. Essentially, this 2-mana creature guarantees even more combat damage triggers, and that's always a good thing with Derevi. Regardless, speaking of more combat damage triggers, let's talk about True Conviction. It's an enchantment that says creatures you control have double strike and lifelink. So first off, lifelink, a nice addition. Yes, we can just gain some life while we're attacking and dealing out damage. Great. But more importantly, by giving our creatures double strike, well, we're doubling up our damage and doubling up our Derevi triggers. So yeah, that can have a huge impact on the game and provide us a ton of value. And we have another way to give double strike, well, and a lot of other things with a Chroma's Will. It's an instant that says choose one if you control a commander as you cast a spell, you may choose both. Creatures you control gain flying, vigilance, and double strike until end of turn, and or creatures you control gain lifelink, indestructible, and protection from all colors until end of turn. Basically, your creatures are unstoppable. Oh, and yes, they're getting double strike too, so even more value is Revy. Next up though, another fantastic way to protect our creatures and pretty much all of our things is Heroic Intervention. It says permanents you control gain Hexproof and Indestructible until end of turn. So yeah, for two mana, protect all your things. Yeah, sign me up. Moving on though, next up we've got Oren Frostfang and Toski Bear of Secrets. Oren Frostfang says attacking creatures you control have Death Touch, and whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. So this makes our creatures even harder to block, and again, whenever we hit a player, we're going to be drawing a ton of cards based on the number of creatures that we have hitting them. Speaking of which, Toski Bear of Secrets is a 1-1 squirrel that can't be countered, has indestructible attack to each combat of able, and most importantly, it says whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. So obviously, although Toski has to attack each turn, it's indestructible, so it's going to be fine the vast majority of the time. And yeah, also, of course, it's going to draw us a ton of cards throughout the game. Speaking of which, we're also going to be adding in Biden of Thassa and Coastal Piracy. Each of these say the exact same thing. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. On top of that, Biden of Thassa has by paying one in a blue and tapping it, creatures your opponent's control attack this turn if able. So if it's an unfavorable time for an opponent to attack, well, we can force them to attack anyways. You know, on top of this and Coastal Piracy, both just drawing us an absurd amount of cards. Next up, though, another fantastic enchantment to add into this deck is Aura Shards. It says whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may destroy a target artifact or enchantment. Again, we've got a ton of low-to-the-ground creatures in this deck, with a lot of them being just one mana. And just by casting that creature and having it enter the battlefield, we can take out an artifact or enchantment. And speaking of taking things out, Austere Command is also going to be a fantastic addition to this deck. It says choose two to destroy all artifacts, enchantments, creatures with converted mana cost three or less, or all creatures with converted mana cost four or greater. 
So yeah, this can be a board wipe that basically does whatever we need for the situation that we're in. And keep in mind, the vast majority of our creatures have a converting mana cost of three or less. So if we don't pick that option, well, it can be a one-sided creature-based board wipe. But two creatures that we are going to be adding in that do have a higher converted mana cost but are going to be well worth it in this deck are Willbreaker and Seedborn Muse. Willbreaker says whenever a creature to poke controls becomes the target of a spell or ability you control, gain control of that creature for as long as you control Willbreaker. Yeah, with essentially any of our Tims or, you know, any of our Derevi triggers, we can just gain control of pretty much all of our opponent's creatures with this. And speaking of value, though, Seedborn Muse can provide us a ton in this deck. It says untap all permanents you control during each other player's untap snap. So have fun with all of your extra mana during your opponent's turns, and of course, have fun with all of your Tims. And again, I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but Tims are essentially like Prodigal Sorcerer that can tap to ping something for one. And you can make those Tims even deadlier with Basilisk Collar, which has a good creature as Death Touch and Lifelink. So yeah, attach this to a Tim and take out whatever you want. And speaking of taking things out... Of course, with all of our additions to this deck, we've got to take some cards out, and yeah, it doesn't mean that these cards are bad cards. They are good cards, it's just that with our upgrades, they're slightly better for this deck, okay? So we're going to be taking out Healer's Hawk, Unbreakable Formation, Andric Lenark Marshall, Solar Tide, Scale Up, and Return to Nature. We're also going to be taking out Gorgon's Head, Keeper of Fables, Spawning Grouts, Commander's Insight, Diviner's Port, and Rewind in Opportunity. Regardless, now that we've talked about the cards that we're adding in and taking out, let's talk about the price. As I mentioned at the start of this episode, our budget has been up to right around $100, and I got really close this time with $99.88. Do keep in mind, though, that this cost does include basic lands at $0.10 cents a piece, so if you already have those basics, well, there's some extra savings there. And also keep in mind that if you buy this deck on TCG Player and utilize Heavily Played and Damage cards, you can save even more there as well, because again, remember that Heavily Played and Damage cards need a home too. Also, though, do keep in mind that this cost does not include the cost of shipping, which might vary depending upon where you live. Regardless, yeah, this deck is a lot of fun, whether you're getting the Break the Bank version or the regular version of the deck. And yeah, there are plenty of other fantastic upgrades that you can add into this deck as well if you want. And again, keep in mind that with these upgrades, these are just recommendations. If you feel like actually, you know, making different upgrades depending upon, you know, your play style or your play group or your LGS, make the upgrades that work for you. There is no be-all, end-all answer when it comes to upgrading your deck, so do what feels right to you. And with that, the show has come to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again and have a good one.